Hey everybody, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Last weekend I went to the Stitch Festival in London and picked up quite a few goodies, and I want to show you what I got. This year was my third year going to the Stitch Festival. I've been to the Knitting and Stitching show I think three times as well. And I particularly enjoyed this year. Now, anybody who isn't familiar with what this is about, they're basically like huge conventions in big convention centers where there are sewing related stalls, also even like yarn and other fiber related stalls, where there's just lots of fabric shops, lots of sewing pattern companies selling their stuff. You can ask questions, you can meet the designers, pattern shop owners. It's a really cool experience. It does get pretty crowded and I will say it can feel a bit chaotic and crazy. Part of the reason why this year was better for me is because I have been there before and they tend to put the same shops in the same locations. So I had a bit of a better idea of like what was where. It was less disorientating. It was crowded though. I went on the Saturday, which was definitely, I think the most crowded day, according to people who were working there as well. And the other thing that was really special about going on that day is I feel like there was some kind of unwritten agreement for lots of sewing YouTubers to go on that day. I didn't get any photos because I just don't, I don't take photos very much. Even on vacations, I don't take photos. So I wasn't gonna start taking them there. There were quite a few people who got some photos with me in there though. So you may have seen some on Instagram if you are following other sewing vloggers. But there were so many sewing vloggers there, some from London, some who came from outside of London, which was super cool. I met lots of people that are my friends online that I haven't met in real life before, which was such an amazing experience. But the main focus today, I'm not gonna get into all that stuff. I wanna focus on what I got because I don't usually get that much at these shows. I think I got like stuff for a coat at the knitting and stitching show and that was it. And this time around, I just, I kept finding things that was like, oh, I had never seen that before. I don't know where I'm gonna get that otherwise, I just need to get it. And so I'm gonna go through in order of how I picked them up, because I feel like there's no other particular order that makes sense, and show you what I got. The first thing I picked up was some fabric for my mom. So mom, if you are watching this, please switch off or skip ahead five minutes. This part of the video is not for you. I have been wanting to make my mom something for her birthday in the summer, and I was thinking of making her a shirt, a button-down shirt. In my mind, I was thinking the Helen's Closet Gilbert top, because I've made that before. I know it's a good pattern, and I think she would like to do the general kind of shape and style of it. But as far as the fabric, I didn't have that much in particular in mind. I was thinking something that is going to be breathable in the summer because she lives in Chicago. She needs something that's going to be comfortable. But I also wanted something fun. So either like a textured cotton maybe or something with a fun print on it. I actually made her a t-shirt a couple of years ago with like a citrus print on it, oranges and lemons and limes. And she wears that all the time. And so when I saw this fabric, it seemed like the obvious choice. It is this really wonderful cotton double gauze fabric with this beautiful peachy print. So it's got these gorgeous vibrant peaches and the lovely flowers on there. I think this fabric is just so, so gorgeous. I got this from Pattern Emporium and I knew where I could get the perfect buttons to go along with it. I went up to the Ethel and Joan stall. So Ethel and Joan do really incredibly like vibrant and unique buttons. And the ones that I picked out are these. So as you can see, the green is absolutely perfect. It's almost like a kind of a two-tone. Well, it is, it's like a multi-tone green on there, which I think is so, so pretty. These, my husband actually said he thought these looked a bit like mangoes, which was not the idea, but I'll take it as a bonus. But I do just think these are gonna be so pretty and pop really nicely on that top. While I was at the Ethel and Jones stall, I had a look and there were some other buttons that I also bought, no project in mind, but just because they were so cool. One are these. Now the color, I wanna show you like, yeah, that's probably, they are so vibrant. They're all like neon. They're literally like a neon pinky orange color. They are so bright. They are so cool. No clue what I'm gonna do with them, but they make me very happy. And then the other ones are these. I actually got two packs because if I wanna make something with it, I might want more than three. These cloud buttons, so you can see their buttons. They're again, like multi-tones. So there's like the pink and the white. 
They're almost like a kind of a sunsetty vibe to me. I think they're just so beautiful. Again, don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I'll find something to do with them. Very happy to take recommendations about what I can do with these, but they were just so cute, I had to get them. The next stall where I got some stuff was the Pigeon Wishes shop. And Pigeon Wishes have tons of beautiful buttons. I do often buy their buttons, but they also have really gorgeous fabrics. And I feel like it's not that easy to buy their fabrics. They're not necessarily in lots of shops. So I feel like going to their stall at this kind of show is the perfect opportunity to pick up some really unique things. And I saw a remnant of this. I'll call it a remnant. It's actually a two meter piece, but it was a pre-cut piece of this really beautiful orange sweater knit fabric. So they called it a cotton viscose jersey, but it's definitely like a sweater knit kind of thing. It is woven into the design. So this is the back. You can see probably just about kind of hints of that orange at the back. I would say this is actually pretty weighty. Like it's, it's quite a heavy fabric. And I think this would make the cutest spring, well, spring, summer, whenever really, cardigan. It is definitely a bit sort of, you know, drapey because of that viscose. So you can see it's got really good movement. I feel like because of the weight of this, it's going to be like wearing a cozy hug. It is super, super soft. I really like that the oranges, as much as I love the bright print on the fabric I got my mom, I love the muted tones of this one. I feel like this is probably more in line with my typical wardrobe. So I feel like it will go well with other things that I wear. And I am not quite sure which pattern I'm gonna go for. I was definitely thought about the Marlowe cardigan because I've made that before and I know it works, but I'm kind of thinking about maybe I want a balloon sleeve. Not entirely sure, but I think a cardigan for sure. And because I wanted to do a cardigan, this is a jersey, but it doesn't have a ton of stretch. I didn't imagine it would, so I'm just looking and checking. Yeah, there, there's a tiny bit of stretch, but I would want to use something different for like cuffs. And I decided to go ahead and pick up some ribbing. So I went back down to the Pattern Emporium stall because I knew that they had ribbing and I picked this up. So this is just poppy ribbing. I got a couple of these just because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. I think it's a good match with the green. I think that will go really well together. And the idea is this will go around sort of the neckline, possibly the bottom, depending on the pattern, and around cuffs as well. And I feel like I'm pretty much set. Like I, I can pick the specifics later, but I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna love that. The other fabric that I got from Pigeon Wishes was this really beautiful cotton jersey fabric. So I, I wanna show you basically the whole fabric because there's so much going across it, but I'll just, hold it up so that you can see. This is a really beautiful print. So it's got these lovely plant background with like blues and pinks and reds and yellows, really pretty colors on there. But if you look up close, there are lots of animals on there. So there are honestly so many animals. I just, I have, oh, some of them are the other way around. <laughs> I haven't even seen, honestly, all of the animals that are on here. So we've got like, Kiwis, elephants, monkeys, there's a sloth, there's lions, like just full of really wonderful animals. This again is really, really soft. I like that it's not a bright white background because I'm not really bright white, similar to like the cardigan fabric. I feel like that's more in my tones, but it is a very lightweight cotton jersey. So it's got a good amount of stretch. It's a nice quality cotton jersey. But I was thinking for this one, because it's, it's a little bit wild and crazy, my first thought was PJs. Pajamas in this would be super duper cute. And I really am in need of some longer sleeve t-shirts for sleeping and I've been throwing away a few that have really gotten worn out. But I thought a matching set with like a long sleeve t-shirt and a long sleeve pants would be super, super cute in this fabric. But depending on how much I can get out of it, because it's quite a wide fabric, I might even be able to sneak out maybe a t-shirt maybe some shorts. It would be really nice to have like mix and match pairing options. And I wanted to get some matching ribbing for this one because again, it's like kind of an off-white creamy color that can be quite difficult to match, but I thought it would be fun to match with the other colors as well. And when I was looking, I couldn't find anything that was perfect for the pink or for the blue. And so I decided to go with this lilac color which it doesn't match as far as like it's not the same color but I feel like it complements the colors really well. I also really like lilac but I'm not a lilac 
purse, like it's not a good color for me, but having it in just like the ribbing around cuffs, the neckline, the top of a waistband, that will be absolutely fine. So this is a circular ribbing I got. Oh, I can't remember the name of the stall. If I can figure out the name of the stall, I'll pop it up on the screen. But I just got a decent amount of that and I think that is gonna make the cutest pajama set, possibly multiple pajama set. We'll see what I can manage out of it. And I could not go to the Pigeon Wishes stall and not pick up some buttons. I picked up these brand new line of buttons from What Vicky Made. So Vicky from The Sewing Bee has designed some different buttons and fabrics. I just want you to see, it's so difficult without showing you out of the packet, but the colors on there, the purple and the orange and the cream, like these are very much the kinds of colors that I wear all the time. So I didn't buy these with this specific project, but I am confident that I have fabrics sitting in my stash and fabrics that I will buy that will be a really good match for these. And because I got quite a lot from their stall, I got a free tote bag from Pigeon Wishes. I didn't know they did tote bags. I was possibly more excited about the tote bag than anything. Who doesn't love a good tote bag? But it has the Pigeon Wishes logo, which is so fun. I really do love Pigeon Wishes, their company, their ethos, the fabrics, the buttons, so it was fun to have my own little tote. And then the last stall that I got stuff from was the Fabric Godmother stall. I actually went there early on when I first came in, but it was so packed, I like literally couldn't get to any of the fabrics. So I was really glad that at the end of the day, like towards the end of the day after lunchtime, I went back and it was much less crowded. So I was able to have a good look around and I picked up two fabrics. The first is one that I have been eyeing for a long time since it came out. I've been considering whether or not to get this fabric. It's a Fabric Godmother designed fabric and it is so, so beautiful. It is this strawberry print viscose linen fabric. I love a viscose linen, guys, you know I do. <laughs> and again, this is a really nice cream, like an off-white background rather than bright white. I will say I was a little reluctant with the white or the creamy white background just because of possible spillage for this kind of thing. I am somebody who, like many of us, if I wear white, I feel like I usually end up wearing whatever I'm eating. I don't want to have something that's really beautiful that I spend time on that just gets destroyed. However, I feel like I've been eyeing this fabric for such a long time, it seemed like the time to get it. I was going around with a friend of mine who had a, an exhibitor's wristband, which meant she got a discount, so I was able to get this a little cheaper, so it kind of seemed like the opportunity, if I'm completely honest. They did also have this in a pink background, which I was really excited to hear about, but when I saw it, it's not a good pink for me, so it wasn't really going to work, and I decided I'm just going to get it. I love viscose linen. It is such a pretty print. I feel like that will work really well on me. They actually had a sample of this made up into the Anna Allen Anthea blouse, which I've made a version of before, but I do want to really, really want to make another version. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. The version of the Anthea blouse that I made though, I scooped the neckline a little bit. So they have a tutorial on their website with like a downloadable piece. So you can scoop the neckline a bit more so it's not as high. I also did a version where I shortened the sleeves, but I think I'm gonna leave the sleeves as is, do the scoop neck with this fabric. I think it's gonna be really beautiful, and I think I'm gonna love wearing this one in the spring and the summer. I'm just happy that I finally went for it and got the fabric. I feel like sometimes, you know, fabrics, they come into your mind or you see them and you're like, ooh, I really, really want that. And then, you know, you might forget about them a week or a month later, and then probably you didn't really need that fabric. But this one, like literally every time I see it, I've been like, oh, oh, maybe I should get it. Maybe I should get it. If I've been thinking about it for that long, I'm just going to get it. And I'm super excited to make that up. And the other fabric I got, I just saw on Instagram that they only literally just put up on their website, the Fabric Godmother. I didn't realize it was like an exclusive for the show and now it's released. Other people can get it. It's a really gorgeous pre-quilted fabric. So if you are on Instagram and you follow Fabric Godmother, you've probably seen them talking about this. It's got this really beautiful side. I think this to me seems like the right side, but the wrong side is also really beautiful. So depending on your preference, you could totally choose to have that as the size that side that is showing. So it's got this really pretty, this to me is like a really wonderful, like a muted red color. It's a softer red. It's not really d deep or bold but it's got like a bit of a more of a brownie, darker hue, which is a really good color for me. And it's got this fun plaid pattern going through it. And again, you kind of got that on the back as well. So 
this I decided would be a perfect thing to make a vest with and that is actually what they had made as well fabric godmother I can't remember if they had a sample or if I've just seen Joni the owner wearing one but this would be a really cute vest and I decided to try and find some matching fabric while I was there for binding so I'm thinking of doing the everyday waistcoat from new craft house because it doesn't have too many seam lines and I will do bias binding on the inside seam lines and then just bias binding going around the edge I think it should be a super quick project I think that pattern also has some ties going across the front but I wouldn't bother with the ties I would just have it open and so I did go around and I picked up some ribbing I found a pretty good match I would have probably preferred a solid but honestly I think this is going to be really nice the colors go really well together so this is going to be my binding going around I don't think I'll bother with pockets because I don't think I well maybe I will I don't know. I'm undecided about the pockets but I do think this is going to be really fun and I think the colors are great for me and Again, I think this is a color and well, both of these colors really will go really well with other things that I already have. I know I've been really loving wearing the quilted vest that I already have, so why not have another? I'm seeing it as a very good sign that though I bought these things a few days ago, I'm still equally as excited about each of the things that I picked up. I feel like I reined myself in to the right degree that I just got things that I really, really love and that I'm very excited to sew up. If you went to the Stitch Festival, let me know how it was for you. Let me know what you picked up as well in the comments down below. I wanna say a huge thank you to anybody who came up to me and said hi, whether you are a YouTuber or you're someone who watches my videos. It was so amazing to get to meet some people in real life and know who I'm talking to. It makes it a lot more real. I am excited about all these projects. Let me know if there are any fabrics that stood out to you or buttons that stood out to you that you cannot wait to see what I do with. Any suggestions, as always, are welcome down in the comments. Please do give me a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you want to see these things made up or if you want to see other upcoming videos. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye!